Understanding soil mechanics is crucial for any geotechnical application. Specifically, understanding the capacity or limits of the soil is what enables successful design for foundations or earth retaining structures. This video will be one of a series of geotechnical videos explaining retaining walls, shallow foundations and stability of slopes from an engineering point of view. However, before we dive into these geotechnical applications, first we need to understand some basic principles of soil mechanics. Soils, unlike other construction materials such as steel, timber or concrete, are almost always under compression. But interestingly, soils never fail in compression. All practical soil failures are due to excessive shear stresses. Shear stresses are less intuitive, so let's have a closer look. The shear capacity of common engineering materials, such as steel, timber or concrete, is governed by the strength of their molecular bonds, and therefore, usually, is fairly high. Soil, on the other hand, is a discontinuous particulate material made up of various size particles. The interlocking of these particles is what gives the soil its resistance to shearing. When the shear stresses along a particular plane or slide surface are large enough to make the particles roll or slide past one another, failure is initiated. In the field, shear failures of a soil mass are usually confined to a narrow zone where rearrangement of the particles occurs. Without these interlocking forces, the material would behave more like a fluid rather than a solid. This condition, where the soil turns into a fluid-like material, does happen sometimes and is known as liquefaction. But it is a specialized case and we will not worry about it for now. Besides the interlocking or frictional strength, soils also possess cohesive shear strength. Cohesion, in practical terms, represents the stickiness of the soil, such as in clays but is usually zero for coarse grained soils like sands and gravels. What makes things complicated is the fact that the frictional strength of the soil is dependent on the pressure the soil is under. This makes intuitive sense since if the soil is compressed, the particles get further interlocked and sliding becomes more difficult. On the other hand, submerging the soil underwater has the opposite effect since the buoyant force from the water helps the particles become partially afloat. In more technical terms, the pressure from the water acts on the particles tending to separate them and therefore reducing the contact force and friction resistance of the material. In practice, the strength of soils is represented by the Mohr column failure criterion. The German engineer Otto Mohr graphically represented the strength of the soil as a line on a graph, with the material's normal stress plotted on the x-axis and the shear stresses on the y-axis. When the soil is loaded, it forms a semicircle on this plot that is known as the Mohr circle. The two ends of the circle represent the normal stresses that the soil is subjected to. An alternative way to look at these stresses is as a confining stress on the low side and an applied stress on the high side. These stresses are also known as the principal stresses of the material. Notice that to keep the circle small and away from touching the failure envelope, we need to increase the confining stress together with the applied stress. In theory, if the soil is well confined, its carrying capacity can be increased indefinitely. Note that every point in the soil mass draws a separate circle on the graph. As the soil continues to get loaded, the circles grow until one or more of them touch the failure line. The point in the soil mass whose more circle touches the failure line first is where the sliding in the soil will occur. This usually happens simultaneously for a whole plane in the material which initiates a sliding failure. The slope of the failure line is represented by a parameter called the friction angle, which is the single most important strength parameter for a coarse grained soil. If the friction angle is high, then the soil can resist higher shear stresses. The physical meaning of the friction angle is related to the incline angle at which the soil slips during failure. This is particularly important in the design of retaining walls and shallow foundations, as we will see in the upcoming videos. For someone unfamiliar with yield lines, this may seem overwhelming. The most important takeaway from here is that the parameter called the friction angle is what determines the strength of a soil. The friction angle of a soil is influenced by the soil type, shape of particles, groundwater condition and void ratio, among other things. So angular, well-graded, compacted soils 
exhibit high friction angles and make up for the best type of soil to be used as backfill or to build a foundation on. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos where we will be discussing geotechnical applications such as retaining walls and foundations. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon if you want to be notified when the next video comes out. Thanks for watching and see you next time.